Hey guys, I'm here with Steve from Adventureland Amusement Park in Long Island, New York. Adventureland started in 1962. It sits on 14 acres and is located in Farmingdale, Long Island. Adventureland has been a household name to generations for over 60 years. It's not uncommon to see three generations of one family at the park at the same time. Have you ever seen behind the scenes at amusement park? Well, neither have I, so let's go check it out together. I'm James Webster, this is Owners and Operators. Steve, thanks for having us here at Adventureland today. I appreciate that. Thanks for coming. It's wonderful. Beautiful day, too. Started in 1962. Uh, who started it? What was the original vision and, and has it changed? Alvin Cohen, Herb Uden, two guys that I don't know how they had the vision to do it because back on Route 110, it was a potato farm. So how these guys had that vision to turn a farming valley into an Adventureland, it really still blows a lot of our minds because in 1962, who thought of it? They, they built it in 62. They stayed with it until I think it was the mid-70s. Since 1975, they sold it to a German guy, Willie Miller. My dad, in, in 1977, and his team got involved in the restaurant. He ended up getting friendly with Willie and helped Willie get the financial ruin to a better place. And that's where Willie ended up getting sick and all. My dad ended up acquiring uh, the park with his team. And 1979, 1980. It's, it's, uh, it's history. Our family's been involved since 77. Tell me what goes into running a seasonal business like this. Seasonal business really starts at the end of October. People think comes October, we close the doors, everybody goes on vacation, and that's it. It's not the way it is. We have a staff of about 25 people, and the 25 of us work all year round, and the 25 of us start October 31st when the park closes. The guys are outside maintaining the rides, winterizing the rides, doing whatever they have to do, uh, servicing the rides over the winter time, whether it's a, me a mechanical fixing, painting, whatever it may be. So there's a lot of stuff that goes on on the outside and there's so much stuff that goes on the inside in the offices, whether it's group sales, promoting group sales, promoting birthday parties, out of the box ideas that we have. Uh, you go to the trade shows. Right after January and February is when everybody starts to year in for that end of March. Yeah, you guys are uh, ready to push season. in too. Yeah, so now we get ourselves really prepared, staffing. That's when this, uh, Paul gets busy with the staffing. And like you said, at this point in this time of the year, we're peaking at right now 600 employees, part-time employees. And by the middle of July, we'll probably look at 750 part-time employees. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's that's really impressive. What, what goes into operating on a day-to-day -day in a museum park? From, from what time, uh, you know, morning. I know you guys are opening in the morning, but what time are you guys getting here? What time is the team starting to get here? And food prep, you guys have so much going on. That we have our cleaners, the guys that, the main, I shouldn't call them cleaners, our grounds crew, which is part of the mechanical team. They're here at six in the morning. They get here at six in the morning, they're starting to clean, the, you know, the garbage cans need to be cleaned, wiped down, they're blowing the, the debris from last night all off the premises. And you would never know, you come in and we don't, I don't get here till like eight o'clock. They're here at six, so I get here at eight, eight thirty, and I'm like, wow, this place is spotless around. Yeah. It's wonderful, it's a nice thing when you, when you see that. You know, and then the, 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 the rest of the staff, full-time staff, got the guys and the girls start coming in between eight and nine o'clock. Answering phones start ringing, the guys, Main, uh, ride check all the rides. I check every single day. There's a, ma uh, you know, a maintenance log that has to be uh, taken care of. So they're doing their thing, and then the staff starts coming in at 10 o'clock, or an hour before we open, half hour before we open. And then you go through the day. We operate the park. It comes 10 o'clock at night now. The park closes. We have our overnight uh, security that'll be here. Overnight park safety. He'll be on staff. We'll be uh, making sure no, there's no trespassers. So it's it's a it's a 24 hour. 24 hour, 365 day supervision of this park. Let's talk about um, the new rides. What goes into deciding, decide, who decides that, and then, and then what, what goes into that? You, you really go by the longevity of a ride. If you see the ride is here a long time, and it's time to change it out, longevity, safety of the ride, okay? 
we'll, we have a, a log. We'll all bring it out and we'll say, okay, what is the safety uh, record of the of the ride? Most all rides are good safety, but you do have a couple of trips and falls and, and whatever reports on the same ride. Well, why is that ride having that issue? Maybe it's time to like switch it out or or correct the issue. And we do it as a team, and we just sit there and we just talk and hash it out. Our new Fireball ride. The ride itself is designed by a company out of Switzerland, but the color scheme and the lighting package on it and the wording on it is so you guys got to nice. We that. did that over a beer at the house. Oh, that's awesome. It is, it is. So you get to order it the way that you, you want it for your for park. Yeah, wow, that's cool. Nice. Same as the turbulence roller coaster at the other end of the park. Sure. Well, that was, that was, they made that ride just for us, and we needed to make it in a way where we can put the, the queue line in a certain spot. And we said, let's put the queue line over here. Not over, like, it, it was, it's such an, it's a fun experience when you're doing it. It's, don't get me wrong. The guys putting it together, it's not that fun. Yeah, I'm sure. So that, that ride, the turbulence, was probably the coldest winter we ever did it. But they did it in, in a matter of months. What is the hardest part about running a, an amusement park? The weather is first and foremost, and people. You know, you're dealing with uh, full-time 25 adults, and now in the summertime you're dealing with over 750 uh, employees, part-time employees. Part so you got to do a lot of juggling. Yeah, so between, sure. Uh, between Paul and my son and, and, and a guy named Matt, they, they do a very, very good job. My other son, Stephen, takes care of the, um, the restaurant staffing. And my daughter inside does other staffing as well. It really is a family business. Yeah, it is. It's nice. If you could snap your fingers and, and, and change one thing or, or make one thing happen, what would that be? Space. Space. More Here space. Here in Farmingdale, eventually. Yeah. Eventually it needs more space. Tell me one thing about Adventureland that most people might not know. I think they would not know is that you have a dedicated bunch of people behind the scenes. That they, they, they trust us. I know they trust us, but you do have a dedicated family, family people behind the scenes bringing Long Island a safe product. We want to bring everybody a safe product. Somebody was asking me, how do you know if this fireball is a success? And as they asked that question, the ride was going and the kids were screaming. I go, that's how I know it's a success. When I hear screams on the rides, I know we made the right decision. And when I hear kids screaming in the park, that's like screams of happiness. What's next? Expansion somehow. You have to expand. I mean, we're expanding as best we can within the park. We're constantly bringing in new stuff. And we have to expand. And the only way to expand is either to get, spa uh, get space or expand within. So we're uh, right now, the, the next ride on our hit list is the Log Room, Adventure Falls. And that's an area of the park that we have a chance to possibly expand. Well, hopefully we come back, check that out. That'd be great. Thanks for joining us today at Adventureland Amusement Park. We hope you've enjoyed this episode and look forward to bringing you inside more interesting businesses like Adventureland. So be sure to follow us so you don't miss out. If you're interested in having owners and operators showcase your business, please comment below and we will be in touch. Thank you and have a great day.